Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And we are here primarily for you, that we can share with you information that may change your life, change your health, and give you the opportunity to really have a quality of life. And it's all based on choices. We all make choices every day. Some that are really good, some that are really stupid, and some that are really bad. The stupid ones we can change. The bad ones we can change. The good ones, let's just keep them going as well as we possibly can. The bad choices we can convert to good choices. And the stupid ones we learn a lesson from. They're all good choices if we learn from them and we change from them. And we are giving you opportunities that show that we, you, and I are the only ones responsible for our health. So by making better choices, we can have better health. So you can listen to me every Saturday and Sunday here at 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. You can go to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com. There you can have all kinds of additional information. My radio show is there where you can listen live anywhere from around the world by just adjusting the times wherever you are to be on the same time we are here in the Central Standard Time in the Midwest of the USA. You can also go to the archive section of the radio show section and pull up any radio show you want to listen to at your convenience or, as they say, on demand. Also, our newsletters are also archived there. You can read until the cows come home, right? Just pull up a topic and read whatever you want. If you are looking for a specific topic, that you want to learn more about, just go to the search section of the newsletter and type in the keyword that you are interested in. And a several, three, four, five, even more sometimes, newsletters will pop up and address a situation where that special topic you are interested in will give you more information. There's a lot of good information. We have videos, radio show, newsletters, science, podcasts, all kinds of things to help you get healthier because for sure your doctor will not help you get healthier. And drugs don't make you healthy either. It's all based on nutrition. The food you eat. And the food you don't eat that you should, and the food that you're eating that you should not be eating. So we can make adjustments. I hope you are, we are in the middle of January. I hope you are still concentrating on your goals, health goals, and all those other ones that you may have set for the year, personal goals, financial goals, wherever you want to go, you can go. You can have anything you want if you want to, if you know what you want, and you decide that's what you really, 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 really want, and then go for it. It's all based on choices. So we're going to talk today about a number of excellent topics. We're going to talk about ADD and ADHD, very good topics to address today. And then we'll talk about an herb that is very special for treating COVID-19 and all the other strains of bacteria that have come from COVID-19. And what about cured meat? And how does that trigger cancer in humans? And then there is help. If you have an autoimmune disease, there is help. And we'll talk about how you can make changes. And then 
Sodium. How does it affect the aging process? And then a rate boost. You know, men talk about libido. Well, women go through the same thing. I've given lectures on sexual male enhancement. And women always say, why do you talk about the male? Why don't you talk about us sometimes? So here we'll address that. And we have more information. So let's go to our topic today that is going to be ADD and HDAD. This is the generation for drugs. And there are drugs. Ritalin. For ADD and ADHD. But there are complications when addressing with drugs or prescribing with drugs. And it's, it's really a very common problem today. A new study finds that the rate of attention deficit disorders, ADD, ADD, attention deficit disorder, has increased by over 60% in the last 20 years. Currently, about 14% of boys and 6% of girls have ADHD. 60% of these kids will end up on a drug. 60% will be on drugs. Ritalin, R-I-T-A-L-I-N. But it has significant adverse effects, side effects. Drugs are not the answer. Nutrition, dietary supplements, vitamins and minerals. After taking a drug prescribed by physicians for three years, kids are one inch shorter and almost five pounds lighter than their peers. Some other adverse effects include loss of appetite, weight loss, having difficult difficulty in sleeping, stomach aches and pains, and headaches. Long-term effects on developing children are known, unknown, I should say. We don't know what the outcome is in later years of development. A new study found that children with ADHD treated with drugs are eight times more likely to develop Parkinson's disease as adults. That's a very serious adverse event. Very serious side effect. So, something we really want to pay attention to, that we make sure that maybe we should take a look at nutrition before we look at drugs. We can always go on to a drug, but first we want to make sure that we are doing as much as we possibly can that will give us the best nutrition, because food is our best medicine. We'll never get away from that. So this is something that we really want to make sure that we have a chance to, to, to support the health of our children. It's just not putting them on drugs, and that's the answer. I've talked to people in, in, with children that their teacher said, I don't want the child back in my class unless you take the child to a doctor and you put the, doc, you put the child on a drug. That's not the answer. The answer is really trying to improve the child's health to reduce the concentration of these drugs. So the first step, change the diet. That's the first step. No sugar. No sugar. Or foods made with sugar. Or refined flour. And just generally... Excessive carbohydrates. No soda. No sweetened drinks. No juice. Crackers, candy, cookies, bread, pasta, cake, 
or ice cream. Boy, that sounds like punishment, right? It sounds like we're penalizing the children because that's what America is like today. That's what all the kids eat today. But do we want healthy children or do we want drugged children? That's a choice. Do you want your kids on drugs? Or do you want to help teach them to eat a better quality of health, the life, the diet? No artificial food coloring. You may not know this. The amount of artificial food coloring in children consumed is five times higher today than in the 1970s. More artificial coloring is added to food today than ever before. Researchers have connected artificial food coloring with increased severity of ADD and ADHD symptoms. Chemicals, dyes, coloring are all harming our children. And then step two. There are two additional key nutrients to help children focus. Phospholipid styrene. It's a phospholipid. Natural. It's clinically proven to increase attention and reduce impulsive behavior in children. Just get kids off sugar. When I was a kid, I was addicted to sugar. I ate a ton of sugar. And I was way overweight depressed, worried all the time, unfounded fears. I was a basket case. Luckily, there were no drugs for kids those days. If there were drugs for those kids for kids those days, I would have been on all of them. I was very impulsive. I had OCD. I had all mental complications. And it's all based on sugar. In a study of children ages 14 to 19 with ADHD, 90% of participants improved after a supplementation with fossil tidal staring. It's a natural substance. It's found in our brain. And we are supplying more of this to our brain function. And French grapeseed extract. It reduces inflammation of the brain. Many experts today believe that most of the damage done to the brain that causes dementia, causes Alzheimer's disease, is due to the fact that the cells of the brain are inflamed by damage. Where does that damage come from? Sugar. Yes, sugar causes inflammation. Omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation. Excessive refined carbohydrates cause inflammation. Our diet causes inflammation. And ADHD is strongly associated with inflammation and autoimmune disease. A recent study found that high levels of inflammation in infants was associated with increased risk of ADHD later in life. And grape seed extract, one of my favorites, Easy to be absorbed, water-soluble. It has tremendous benefits. Grapeseed has been shown to reduce the very specific markers of inflammation associated with the brain and heart. That's where grapeseed extract really has its greatest benefits, is heart function and brain Specifically, inflammation associated with ADHD 
and bring them back down to near normal. Grapeseed extract. Great for kids. And omega-3 fatty acids from fish. And particularly a type of extract from the fish from the head of salmon. Not the body. The body doesn't have a very high quality level of omega-3 fatty acids. It's a long story, which I won't get into to today, but the oil extracted from the filet to make it into an oil goes through a tremendous amount of harsh processing that destroys the quality of the oil. There's a very high quality salmon extract with omega-3 fatty acids and the phospholipids including phosphatidylserine. And kids get really great benefits. I had a family that had an 11-year-old boy that was so obnoxious. He could not pay attention. He could not focus. He bothered all the other kids in the school, in the classroom, The teacher just the teacher was so beside herself that she wanted that child out of her class. Sounds like me when I was in grade school. Yep, that was exactly like me. And I fought the teachers. I was obnoxious. And and kids can have a benefit by changing their diet, by putting them on the grapeseed extract, putting them on the very special phospholipid content and omega-3 fatty acids from the head of the salmon. The head of the salmon contains five phospholipids, the same five phospholipids in the same ratio as found in the brain. And this teacher said, take your child to a doctor or otherwise I won't have him in my class anymore. Put him on a drug. They did not want the child on a drug. They were smart enough to know that's not the way to go. So they asked me what to do. And I said, this is what I would do. I would, the grapeseed extract, the very special salmon extract of omega-3 fatty acids. I said, take these to your doctor Show them to your doctor, get your doctor's approval, and then ask your doctor to give you two or three months and see the results of the natural approach versus the drug approach. You can always add the drug later or combine the drug. And they did. The teacher did not know the young boy was not on a drug but when she, when he came back into the classroom, in time she said, oh my gosh, what a nice child. I'm so happy that you put him on a drug. He was not on a drug. He was on a nutritional approach to a better brain function. It, it can make a whole, change a whole life. So how do you use this combination. Well, this combination, it's a, it's, a, it's a blend of components for the child. So you start with a combination of 30 milligrams of fossil tail stearine, 25 milligrams of French grapeseed extract with rhodiola, L-tyrosine, n l cetylcysteine L-taurine, vitamin B6, DHA, DMAE by tartrate. This is a formulation for children. This is a way to help calm your child. So you can look for it at a health food store. Something to help calm your child. Now for children ages four, I would say once a day. You can increase the dose as needed every few days until calmness and focus is attained. 
also consider the omega-3 fatty acid that I talked to you earlier, the peptides, the phospholipids from salmon, all are very effective for regulating brain function. Give your child the best start possible. Now let's take a look at a a very specific test for the prostate, for the PSA. PSA, when you say that prostate has a PSA level, that stands for a prostate specific antigen test. A closer look at that will reveal what PSA really means. And the PSA is a marker for increased prostate cancer activity in men with prostate cancer or the risk of prostate cancer. Now, men with prostate cancer who P, whose PSA levels double in less than 10 months have a 12 times increased risk of cancer that will spread to the bone and a four times increased risk of death than men with prostate cancer whose PSA levels are increasing more slowly. Now, in huge numbers of men who have prostate cancer, who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Let's say they're in their 70s. They will live probably till they're 95 and still have prostate cancer. It grows so very, very slowly. And most times doctors realize that. And they use a, an approach such as, let's wait and see. But a doctor came up with a chart, the PSA chart, that shows the increased risk of cancer by an increased level of PSA. Now, PSA is not necessarily a useful screening test, but men are subjected to it anyway. Doctors use it all the time anyway, because that's all they have. But the doctor who developed it said later in life he wished he would have never developed that specific test. It's so unreliable. It gives a lot of false readings. It scares the bejesus out of men when they shouldn't have to have any fear. It does not give a good test in terms of whether or not men have a risk of cancer. It often gives a false positive report, leading to unnecessary biopsies and treatment. Write it out. But this, again, is my opinion. When I say write it out, I would never, ever get a biopsy. I would never treat it except naturally and nutritionally. I would never take a drug. I would never have it removed. I would never go on hormones. But this is something that I choose to do, my choice. If you are diagnosed with prostate cancer, talk to your doctor. Get more information. Do your research. Do your homework. Find out how high of a risk you are because prostate cancer grows so, so very slowly in 95% of the men that have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. So now you can actually reduce, yes, you can reduce the PSA level and treat prostate cancer. by reducing the inflammation of the prostate. Inflammation, inflammation, inflammation is what everybody dies from and has diseases based on inflammation. But preceding the inflammation, we have oxidative stress. 
That's what causes the injury to the cells, injuries to the joint, injuries to the brain, injuries to the heart. And then inflammation is the good guy. Inflammation is not bad. It's bad when it's chronic, long-term. I always refer to the injury of where you slam your finger in a car door. Yikes, it hurts. And you have some signs and symptoms that are associated with slamming your finger in a car door. It swells up, maybe double the size. It hurts like hell. And it's hot, painful, red. Okay, that's inflammation in action. It's there to heal that injury from slamming it in the car door. Now, we have inflammation in our body in a lot of different places, joints, heart, all of our diseases today. 98% of all of our diseases today are based on inflammation. Not that inflammation caused it. Inflammation is there to heal it. So if you stop slamming your finger in the car door, it's not going to happen again. You're not going to have inflammation in that finger. And all of our inflammation today comes from our diet, sugar, carbohydrates, and omega-6 fatty acids. They're all pro-inflammatory. But that's the American diet. And we continue to eat the American diet day after day after day after day. So we have an inflammatory condition day after day after day after day. I've got to stop here. Don't go away. I have a whole lot more to tell you and how you can change your health if you have prostate PSA levels too high. Back right after this, right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. And welcome back, my friends. We're back here with Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. We're here until the top of the hour, so we have a lot more to talk about your prostate Gentlemen, your prostate can be subjected to and diagnosed as cancer. What do you do? It's a, it's a slap in the face when you hear it. Fear. You wonder if you'll die. You wonder how your family will continue on. Cancer is not a pretty picture. But there's help. Every, there's always help. With conventional medicine, and alternative medicines. So we can be a, a major turnaround. But what I was telling you before is that we can make changes. The PSA level is only an indicator, an indicator. It's not a positive diagnostic tool that says you have cancer. Or you will have cancer. A 2012 study found that curcumin, I talk about curcumin all the time. Curcumin BCM95. Make sure you say BCM95 because BCM95 is a very special form of curcumin, very highly absorbed. It's bio enhanced absorption. 700% higher than any other form of curcumin. And it blocked, this form of curcumin blocked the ability of prostate cancer cells to release inflammatory compounds. Inflammation. As I said before the break, we don't change our diet. That means we have inflammation all the time because our diet, the American diet, causes inflammation. Obesity causes inflammation. Fat cells cause inflammation. Sugar causes inflammation. Carbohydrates cause inflammation. Omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation. We are a nation of inflammation. And that's what damages the cells. Our oxidative stress damages the cells and inflammation comes there only to right the ship. To bring stability back to the body. But if we don't change our diet... 
then we're going to have inflammation all the time. So when you stop slamming your finger in the car door, you won't have inflammation. And if you stop eating the American diet, you'll reduce your inflammation. And therefore, there was less spreading, <clears throat> excuse me, there was less spreading of the prostate cancer called metastasis. It, it does not spread. So in men being tested for prostate cancer, curcumin, PCM95, 1,000 milligrams. That's about two soft gels, three times daily. This is a study on cancer, prostate cancer. 1,000 milligrams. That's about two soft gel capsules, three times daily. Protected against the most common adverse effects experienced with radiotherapy. Urinary problems, including 50% reduction in the numbers of men with daytime urinary frequency problems. Also added to improve the PSA score. Pomegranate has been shown to kill prostate cancer cells and slow the spreading of prostate cancer. Grapeseed, like curcumin, the French grapeseed extract blocks inflammatory compounds associated with cancer spreading, metastasizing. Aggressive prostate cancer has also been linked to a very low level of vitamin D, a vitamin D deficiency, and psilocybin. Psilocybin is a very specific compound extracted from milk thistle. You may see that milk thistle in your garden. The purple top, beautiful thistle. Got some sharp leaves on it, but it's a pretty thistle. And in the top of that thistle is a kind of a bulb, and it contains compounds called psilocybin from milk thistle. And these other compounds from milk thistle were associated with up to an 85% reduction in prostate cancer cell death. Now totally, about 1,500 milligrams of vitamin D3 plus curcumin, 750 milligram curcumin, BCM95, two soft gels, Grape seed extract, pomegranate extract, and psilocybin, a combination that can have tremendous effect for supporting prostate health. Now, if you're diagnosed, talk to your doctor. Get your doctor's opinions, suggestions, and take the choice, make the choice, I should say, that's best for you. You can, use a, you can use conventional drug therapy or chemotherapy, radiation, whatever might be necessary that you feel comfortable with. And don't forget to include prayer. God has the answers. Talk to God. Talk to your doctor. And then make your choice. I've talked about Boswellia. Boswellia is a tree that grows in Africa, India, and those areas that the tree grows very well in the very hot desert areas. And I've talked about it being mostly effective as reduction of inflammation in the joints, as well as the upper respiratory tract and intestinal tract. So we're talking intestinal tract, Crohn's disease, colitis. Botswana is a superior herb for treating and reversing and preventing intestinal tract problems. Upper respiratory tract. That would be like COPD, bronchitis, sinusitis, 
any kind of bronchitis or lung disease or lung condition. But now, Boswellia has just been developed and discovered for the treatment of COVID-19. You can get better faster with Boswellia. 47 patients in a study were hospitalized for COPD, excuse me, uh, COVID-19 treatment received either Boswellia or a placebo for two weeks. The results of this study of two weeks versus the placebo, the patients treated with Boswellia had a higher, better level of oxygen saturation, had a 42% lower levels of inflammatory markers, and those patients stayed in the hospital 25% shorter, less than those that are, were on a placebo. And additionally, every patient in the Boswellia group who lost their sense of taste and smell had significant improvement. While several people in the placebo group with these symptoms had no improvement. So Boswellia has a great effect of treating upper respiratory tract infection. Talking about cancer this, this morning, especially in prostate cancer. But as I told you before, choices. We all make choices. And here's a choice you can make. Either eat cured meat or not eat cured meat. Because cured meat is linked to an increased risk of cancer. Cured meat that's linked to cancer is cured by nitrates. Nitrites. N-I-T-R-I-T-E. Nitrates. Sodium nitrates. Nitrates, nitrates. There's two kinds. And chemicals are used to cure meats, cured processed meats, such as bacon, hot dogs, and sausage. It's a preservative. It prevents them from spoiling. But you can also buy uncured meats, bacon, hot dogs, and sausage, you just have to look for it. Make sure you buy uncured processed meats. It's a step in the right direction. Not the best, but it is a step in the right direction. These compounds, the nitrates, that are added to our processed meat, and then eating the processed meat, have been linked to increased risk of cancer, prostate cancer, but especially colon cancer. In previous research using animal models, the animals were fed very high levels of nitrates, greater than 50% of their diet was processed meats. It, I, 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 yes, I agree, much higher than a, nor, a human would normally digest or ingest nitrates. But that gives you more results faster in an animal study. And this was a new animal study. Researchers tested the nitrate intake in animals at a level that was still very high but not higher than those typical human intakes, which was like 15% of the diet was processed meats. So mice fed a diet of 15% hot dogs, had a tumor count 75% higher than the animals that did not eat any processed meat at all. So while animals fed a 15% processed pork diet, 
had 82% more tumors in the colon versus the control groups or control animals that did not eat the processed meat or the processed pork diet. So these nitrates cause tremendous amount of damage. Remember oxidative stress? Anything that causes some damage to the cells will eventually have more inflammatory processes going on because the inflammation is there to try to heal the damage. Inflammation is not bad. It's never bad. So when you buy an anti-inflammatory, you buy it because it helps to reduce the inflammation. But if you don't stop the cause of the inflammation, you're never going to catch up. So if you want to get rid of the inflammation in the intestinal tract, in the colon, that may cause colon cancer, and with more likely it will, at the level that some, some people consume sausages and bacon and pork, processed pork. It's not pork that's bad. It's the processed pork. It's the processed meats, the cured meats. And previous studies have found that eating an equivalent of four pieces of bacon Four pieces of bacon or two slices of ham daily. Listen to this, folks. Here's what I mean about choices. You can choose to do this or choose not to do this. So these previous studies that I ran across, and I dig studies out all the time, to prove to you, I'm not making this stuff up. This is not coming from me. I'm only finding these studies to share with you because I know you don't have time. You're not going to dig through the studies I do. I spend sometimes eight to 10 hours a day going through scientific websites, scouring for studies that I can share with you that will give you reason to change your diet. You may go screaming over the hill knowing that you have to give up your sweets, give up your desserts, give up your bacon, give up whatever, you know. You may not want to. But if you knew the result of eating those crap, junk food, you may say, well, it's not worth it. Or I should reduce it drastically. I love bacon. But I only have it maybe once in a blue moon. I don't have it every day. It's kind of like, hey, it's, it's a perk. It's a it's pleasure. And studies have found that eating the equivalent of four pieces of bacon, four, that's nothing. I know people that put away a pound of bacon. Now you can buy odd cured bacon. No preservatives. Not the bacon that causes it. It's the nitrates. And two slices of ham daily increase the risk of colon cancer by 30%. That's a high number. So that's a choice you can make. Look for the uncured bacon, uncured sausages, or cut back drastically and never go overboard. Now, we know we have, a lot of people have autoimmune diseases. Why do we have autoimmune diseases? We talk about immune health, right? We talk about having a better immune system so that we can fight against viral infection. I just recently wrote a blog that will be up on my website shortly, how we have so many viral infections and it's all due to the fact that we don't have the right nutrients in our body on a daily basis to maintain a healthy immune system. Our immune system 
is our natural vaccine. We don't need it by injection. It's already in our body. And if we maintain a healthy immune system, it's going to be able to fight back, block, inhibit, and kill viruses. But we have been misled, misinformed, that you have to, have to, have a vaccine. Well, in some cases, I, I can't argue the point because if you don't take care of yourself and you are susceptible to viral infection and you're going to spread it, then it's better to have a vaccine if, that, if you're not going to take care of yourself. I don't know. That's a personal choice. I'm not taking a vaccine. But I know I have a healthy immune system. And I make sure that I have a healthy immune system. I do my best to ensure that I have a healthy immune system. I don't eat sugar. I don't eat carbohydrates. I eat a lot of good healthy fats, lots of olive oil, lots of good protein. I take a lot of vitamins and minerals that are related specifically for the immune system. We can't have a healthy immune system without four vitamins and two minerals. And these are, are they're textbooks written on these nutrients for the immune system. Food supports our immune system. But if you don't eat right, you know, maybe the, maybe your choice is a vaccine, and that's something you have to choose between you and your doctor. I don't think there should be a mandate for vaccines. That's my choice. That's my opinion. That's my personal opinion. I don't think anybody should ever lose their job or... Um, be rejected because they choose not to take a vaccine. We know how maybe somebody's taking care of their health and doing the right things and never had a COVID-19 infection. And the COVID-19 infection usually is associated with the elderly and those that have an underlying health issues because they're already sick. The elderly is, is frail. Their diet is terrible. And they don't have nutrient intake that will give them a healthy immune system. So, choices, right? Well, why do we have an autoimmune disease? An autoimmune disease occurs when the immune system goes out of whack, and attacks healthy cells by mistake. And some of the most common autoimmune diseases include multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis. Now, the most common treatments for autoimmune diseases are drugs that suppress the immune system. But this reduces the body's ability to defend itself against pathogens, whether they, whether they be viral or bacterial or fungal, which would cause bacterial and viral infections. So now we are naked. We have been stripped of our immune system because it's, it's suppressed by drugs. And in a meta-analysis, and what I mean by meta, M-E-T-A, analysis, is researchers take as many studies they can find on a very specific topic. Might be 10 studies, maybe 20, maybe 30, maybe 500. And they go through all those studies and they come down to one conclusion based on 500 studies. And that final analysis is the result of those 500 studies. Some are positive, some are negative, some have too small of a population study, whatever. They come down to one conclusion based on all those studies. So researchers collected 34 studies on 10 different autoimmune diseases that were treated 
with curcumin. Curcumin extract. And the result of all the studies, all the studies were positive. Highly positive. Meaning they got great results. With the greatest benefits that were seen in psoriasis. Ulcerative colitis. And rheumatoid arthritis. Curcumin has the unique ability to regulate, not to suppress, but to regulate the immune system, reduce inflammation without suppressing immune function. So now you have the best of two worlds. Curcumin treats the condition and strengthens the immune system. It stops the autoimmune disease. So it does both. It regulates and modulates the immune system. It reduces the inflammation and does not suppress the immune function. So you have a healthy immune system that can stop viral infection or bacterial infection or fungal infection. Curcumin is that herb that the Indians, who have been using it for thousands of years, call it the all-in-one solution. It does everything. I would look for a curcumin that is complex with turmeric essential oils, which increases the absorption 700%. Very, very effective. So it strengthens the immune system without causing an excessive autoimmune disease. So it can treat MS or Parkinson's or psoriasis in a very, very effective way. If I were going to suggest a good combination for psoriasis, because I know a lot of people that have psoriasis and they just don't have an answer, curcumin and zinc are two combinations, I should say a combination of the two are very, very effective for reducing inflammation and that's what psoriasis really is inflammatory process. It works extremely well. So now pick the best curcumin possible. Curcumin is the medicine. Turmeric is not. Turmeric is a spice. I love it. I I put on everything I, I make for dinner. I sprinkle it on everything. Eggs, meat, whatever. But turmeric only has a very, very small percentage of curcumin. It has to be extracted out of many tons of turmeric and concentrated up to 95%. So combining curcumin with turmeric essential oil is a safe and effective way to ensure the absorption. So look for curcumin standardized to its key compounds, the curcuminoids. I would suggest 750 milligrams of enhanced absorption curcumin two, three, four times a day. Highly effective for an inflammatory processes, which includes about 98% of all our diseases. Strikes right to home. Then, my friends, my show is done for the day. I'm ready to run out of here and maybe have a little bit of time to, to chill out with my dog today. Maybe we'll go for a nice long walk. So remember, stay on, stay on gauge for your, for your goals for the year and make some changes in your health and your diet. Say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you, my friends, and God bless this great country. Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.